Well, this is a scary story. U.S. blaming North Korea for its WannaCry cyber attack this past May and hit 300,000 computers in 150 countries. Hospitals, businesses, schools, consumers all hit. North Korea stands accused of demanding Bitcoin payments in return. The U.K. and Microsoft also blame North Korea. But is it an act of war? Let's bring in former Green Beret commander. He is retired Lieutenant Colonel Michael Watts. Good to see you, Colonel. Is it an act of war? Well, I think it depends on the activity, right? There's intelligence gathering. In this case, I think it was to raise funds for the North Korean regime through ransom payments by shutting down these hospitals. But then, you know, it could be. I mean, if you bomb a power plant versus try to infiltrate it and burn it up from the inside through cyber, that could be an act of war. We need to begin treating it that way, and we need to be able to deter it and let our adversaries know that if you do this through cyber, we're going to take proportional response. I mean, you were saying at the break, North Korea yeah. basically raises children from young age to do attacks like this. Yeah, right? they're cyber very attacks. good. Aside from the Russian and the Chinese, North Koreans have some of the best offensive cyber capability in the world. They identify young children at an early age, kind of math prodigies, set them aside and groom them to That's do all they nothing did. but this. Wow. And this is what worries me in terms of a counterattack if we have a you know, if we have hostilities on the peninsula, it worries me as much as their ICBMs. They just in October tried to infiltrate our electrical grid yeah. and shut it down. The, the, the Ukraine saw its power grid That's shut right. down, li likely by the Russians. But yeah. the North Korean attack affected surgeries in the U.K. had to be stopped yeah. because of this. Wow, yeah. what an attack. Let's get to tr uh, the president unveiling his national security strategy. The president is saying economic security is national security. Roll tape. A nation without borders is not a nation. A nation that does not protect prosperity at home cannot protect its interests abroad. A nation that is not prepared to win a war is a nation not capable of preventing a war. A nation that is not proud of its history cannot be confident in its future. And a nation that is not certain of its values cannot summon the will to defend them. This is a far cry from President Obama's 2009 apology tour. Remember this? The dis early decisions that we've made, uh, that you're starting to see uh, some restoration of America's standing in the world. There have been times where America has shown arrogance and been dismissive, even derisive. The United States is still working through some of our own darker periods in our history. We've at times been disengaged, and at times we've sought to dictate our terms. We have to acknowledge potentially we've made some mistakes. What do you make of the change in tone, Colonel? Yeah, so there's some, there's, that's the fundamental difference. And I can tell you as a soldier abroad, that makes all the difference in the world. Where I, you know, at its core, I think President Obama truly believed that American intervention and leadership abroad did more harm than good. And I think what we're seeing now is President Trump saying, while not perfect, the United States must lead in accordance with our values and America's back. What, is, what does it mean for the world to have a damaged America in the eyes of the world? Well, if America is not going to lead, who is? The Russians? The Chinese? I and mean, that's not in, in accordance with, with Western values of free markets, of free press, you know, uh, of, of you know, liberalism in the broad sense. Um, and, and if, you know, the rest of the world is looking for the United States to lead. And what we've seen over the last eight years is a withdrawal of American leadership that, that we've all, I think, enjoyed, maybe even taken for granted it's post-World War II. So, you know, I'm also encouraged to see economic aspects put up front and center. Economic security is national security. And what we've seen, whether it's currency manipulation, whether it is unfair trade practices and the theft of our, we were talking a minute ago about cyber, the theft of our technological edge wholesale over the last 10 to 15 years to be now front and center in this strategy. I was able to sit down with General okay. McMaster and, uh, and that is key on the president's mind. Colonel Michael Walsh, thank you so much. And thank Thanks. you for your service, our All country. Right. Thank you.